For six unrivaled decades now, Walt Disney Pictures has dwarfed other Hollywood animation makers with its uncanny knack for transforming classic stories into classic family entertainment. 26 full-length features to date, with a 27th on the way. It's called Oliver and Company, a new twist on an old twist, Oliver Twist. It's Dickens' timeless story, updated the amazingly musical Disney way, with this outcast kitten starring in the lead as an appealing little orphan who falls in with a tough but lovable gang of street smart dogs. Hey, man, check it out, huh? Hey, it's an alien! Cool it, guys, it's just a cat. Although Oliver and Company is inspired by a classic English novel, some modern-day Disney touches have made it all new and all American. It takes place in 1988 New York City, a contemporary place filled with contemporary characters created around the voices of some very contemporary stars, like actress-entertainer Bette Midler, cast as a pampered pedigree poodle named Georgette, and comedian Cheech Marin, adding his unmistakable Hispanic spice to a hot-blooded chihuahua named Tito. Singer-composer Billy Joel making his acting debut as the fast-thinking, smooth-talking Dodger, a hard guy terrier with a secret soft spot in his heart for the cuddly new kid in the mob. Hey, keep it down, guys. The game's on. Oh, boy, Dodger. <laughs> Top dog has to get help from my cat. <laughs> Billy Joel was suggested real early on by a, uh, the music director. And at the time, it was like, hmm, Billy Joel? Hey, you can sing great, but can you act? And uh, he was in New York, and I was here. So we thought, well, the most expedient thing to do, the quickest way to just get it, like an immediate sort of sense of, is he right or not, before we go to New York, was to just do it over the phone. So we sent him dialogue. And I played the part of Oliver, and he was Dodger. It worked out great. He could really act, and he was really into the part. Of course, Billy Joel doesn't just act in Oliver and Company, he sings too. So does Bette Midler and Ruth Pointer and Huey Lewis too, each performing one of six original songs, fine-tuned to the ears of today's highly hip moviegoers, both kids and adults alike. One thing that's not new about Oliver and Company is Disney's traditional use of full and expensive hand animation techniques. Frame by frame for two and a half years, 300 artists and technicians worked with more than a million story sketches and some 120,000 individual animation cells to produce the final movie. But even here, Disney added an amazing bit of modern electronic magic. Computer-generated background images to put hand-animated characters into a world that isn't quite like any other seen on screen before. We're only seeing the tip of the iceberg as to what the, the computer can give to us. How complex does Disney computer imagery really get in Oliver and Company? Hop aboard this motorized trike and see for yourself. It's made up of 18 parts, each moving in 15 different directions at any given time. It's a case of computers doing the detail work, while Disney artists spend more human creative time on story and characters. Another example, this big production number. Georgette the dog, putting on the dog, with a Bette Midler song called Perfect Isn't Easy. We wanted to really push the, the MGM musical kind of a look to it. In one part here, she comes down at the end, this long uh, stairway. And as she's walking down, we have this thing that spirals around. I mean, it's a big stairway that goes down. We put it on the computer. And we had the camera sit like right at her feet. And as she's walking towards you, the camera stays in front of her and just keeps following her back as she walks all the way around. Then the camera goes way up high into the ceiling. It was really exciting to, to do that kind of a, a scene with the computer because the background is actually moving in perspective. It's something we could have never done 20 years ago. As remarkable as they are, don't look for computers to replace human animators at Disney. Because here, electronic trickery is just one of many artistic tools kept strictly in the hands of living, breathing, imagining people. I think one of the great fun things we've been watching in the recent years is turning artists loose on computers and watching what comes out of it. Because artists will ask questions that normal people don't ask. Uh, could I do this with this machine? You know, And they really begin to get excited about it. Full animation, handcrafted the same way Walt Disney himself perfected it. Combine it with the latest computer image technology, 
plus a script full of contemporary words, music, and celebrity voices that tell a time-tested story in a very today kind of way. And you've got the Disney secret for family filmmaking success. It's worked for some 60 years now, and it looks like it's going to keep right on working for a lot of years and a lot of new movies like Oliver and Company still to come. Absolutely, positively.